This video is just a short extract from the entire course. If you wish to see all of the videos from this series at higher quality and in far larger screen size, head over to ifskills.com. The next type of feature we're going to be exploring here is a lofted boss base feature. A lofted boss base adds material between two or more sketches within a part that act as profiles to create this single feature. A good example is the bottle model that I created earlier. In fact, the very first feature on this model is the loft feature that I used to create the main body. This was done with a series of profiles that change. As you can see, it starts as a round circle and then changes into a rectangle with rounded edges, another rectangle with rounded edges, slightly smaller, back to a circle to give this shape. It's pretty straightforward. Like I said, at the very least, you need two profiles. They don't have to both be sketches. One of them can be a face or another feature that can be used as a profile. So we'll go over and we'll show the basic idea how to create a lofted feature. So we have this single part, it's just a little plate, and I've already created a sketch plane that was offset from two inches. And then I added a sketch of a circle. Of course, it's fully defined with a tangency relation between the circle and this edge. The center lines are coincident and the diameter specified. So using the loft, what I want to do is actually create a feature that will combine this face to this sketch. So we'll just pre-select this face, hold down the control key, and pre-select the sketch. You don't have to pre-select, but it does make things a lot easier. So click on Lofted Boss Base here in the Features tab of the Command Manager, and instantaneously you get an idea of the loft that will be created without selecting any other parameters. In fact, it looks pretty good. We'll look at it from the top. You can see the tangent edge here, the points on the profiles that were selected automatically, and you can see these edges here. So without selecting any other parameters, let's just take a look at that. Pretty simple little lofted feature. So let's take a look at a couple of the options here. First is the profiles. This is where you can add and remove profiles for your lofts. You could change the order. You could delete specific profiles or add profiles. The next box is the start end relations. This is how you could set how the first and last sketch in the series relate to other areas within your model. So the start constraint is the first sketch, which is up here, sketch six. Very few constraints we can add. We can say direction to vector. So if we had a, another edge within the part, we can specify that the feature as it comes off this profile will go in another direction based off of that edge. We could change the angle for it change the direction. Normal profile uses the sketch with no outside influence, but it allows you to specify that the sketch is going to have more influence within that loft. For instance, you could change the tangent directions, or you can increase the strength. So as I change this, you'll see that this profile has more influence on this loft the higher the number goes. The lower the number goes, it's less influence. So we'll set that to none. End constraint, you'll see a couple more options here. And this is all based off of the profiles that are selected. Since this one was created off a of face of another feature, we have a couple more here we can do. We still have the direction vector and a normal to profile. So we can increase or decrease the strength of that profile within the loft but we also have tangency to face. This one I like, especially when you're mating to existing geometry, because it actually takes this face off the existing geometry and carries it through through the beginning of that loft. So when the loft is created, you have a nice smooth surface. It doesn't seem like an afterthought. Next face, you could select which face is going to influence the loft. So it went from the outside edges, which made that loft be tangent all the way through, to the top edge, 
where you see that the tangency comes off that top edge, which gives you a little rounded face. Once again, we could change the strength based off of the tangencies of that. And curvature to face is available when you're attaching a loft to the existing geometry, which we are in this case. And what it does, it applies a smooth curvature continuous loft at the start or end based off of the geometry that's selected. In this case, it's not going to make a difference, and that's why nothing's really shown here. But if we had a different angle, different face angle on this, like if we had a slight draft, the curvature to face would bring that loft in and then bring it out as it goes in order to have a smooth, continuous face. So we'll set it back to tangency to face. Guide curves is if we had additional 2D sketches that connect the profiles that will specify how the loft is going to happen. So I'll show you an example of that. Let's go ahead and exit out of this, creating the front plane here, just a regular 2D sketch. And I'm going to do this with the spline. So we set these. So it's coincident with each one of these edge using the pierce tool. So that spline is fully defined. Now we'll just change the angle. So that will act as our guide. So we'll go ahead and start the loft tool again, our two profiles, and we'll select our guide curve. And you can see what happens. It actually has a greater influence. Even selecting some of the other ones, you notice sometimes will not work, especially in this case, because this guide is not created to be tangent to the face. So it kind of freaks out. If I was to say, okay, it gets a little warping and rippling going on in here because in order to maintain that guide curve at that one area of geometry, it has to do some funky stuff. So let's just throw that out. Go back and pre-select these. Center line option is if rather than using guide curves, we have a center line in the middle of the profile connecting the two profiles in the middle. And that's gonna be used to dictate how the loft will be created. And there's a couple other options that you can explore on your own, like merge to the tangent faces, show the preview, close the loft. In this case, it's not gonna be something we can do because we only have these two profiles, but a closed loft will create a single closed loft based off multiple profiles. Kind of hard to really give an example of that without showing it. So we'll go ahead and create that. So you can see the result now. You can go back through it anytime and edit the sketch, edit the feature, add remove profiles. So there you go.